There will be five questions on drive shaft, universal joints, and CV joint diagnosis on the test. Let's go through the task list. D1 wants you to know how to diagnose noise and vibration problems. Tires need to be balanced or they will create a vibration that is felt in the passenger compartment. The drive shaft comes balanced for the manufacturer and it needs to keep its balance or it will create a vibration that is felt more as vehicle speed increases. Drive shaft related vibrations increase as vehicle speed increases. A common method the manufacturer uses to balance a drive shaft is to weld the balance weight. If it falls off, the drive shaft could become unbalanced and create a vibration. Other ways the drive shaft itself could become unbalanced are material buildup on it, such as dirt or a layer of undercoating, and if it becomes dented. Front wheel drive vehicles use a drive axle with CV joints. There's an inner CV joint and an outer CV joint. Worn inner CV joints can cause a vibration while going straight. Worn outer CV joints will cause a clicking noise and possibly vibrate while turning. Number two, inspection and replacement. Bent or worn slip joints and yokes should be replaced. Anything listed there should be of no trouble to know how to replace. The important thing to know is proper phasing. The U-joints need to be phased together. Basically, the end caps need to be on the same plane as each other, especially on two-piece drive shafts. Here, visually, we can see that all U-joint end caps are pointing in the same direction. Well, the rear axle is missing, but if it was there and connected, that U-joint would be phased with the others. They would be on the same plane. But sometimes a yoke might be bent and it could be difficult to see a difference. To be certain that the U-joints are phased, you can measure their angle with an inclinometer. Here, we're using a simple angle finder. The drive shaft has been rotated, so the bearing caps are facing up and down. At this point, we are not measuring the working angle. We measure the angle of the bearing cap and the other U-joint on this drive shaft. They should be near the same angle. The measurement is two degrees and the other U-joint is at two degrees. They are phased together. The important information about number three is keeping the U-joints in phase during reassembly. Do this by indexing the parts before disassembly and lining them up during reassembly. We're going to skip over to number six, measuring drive shaft angles. Now we turn the angle finder to be parallel with the drive shaft. This is the installation angle, about 10 degrees. The drive shaft angle closest to the transmission usually does not change. Therefore, the installation and working angles should be the same. The installation angle at the rear axle end is 10 degrees. This angle is designed to change as the rear axle moves up and down. So the installation angle and working angle vary. The drive shaft angles should cancel out within one degree. Cancel out within one degree. Ours canceled out perfectly. Basically, anything that changes the installation angle of the transmission end can cause variations in the driveline angle, which could lead to vibrations. A broken transmission mount or ride height issues can cause these variations in driveline angle. We're going to skip number four. This is work for a specialty shop. Number five, measure drive shaft runout. The general procedure is to check runout at three places, at the center, and about three inches from each end. Clean the test area before you begin with a wire brush. Here's a mark for the starting point. At the center, we are seeing about 11 thousandths of an inch. The specification is no more than 24 thousandths of an inch. The other two measurements were within specification. The drive shaft bolts up to the companion flange. The companion flange is also known as the pinion flange. You can also check its runout. Some companion flanges require an adapter to check runout. This is the general procedure, preferably with the drive shaft removed. Here's our starting point mark. Too much runout can add vibration to the drive line. 
We saw about 2,000 of an inch, which isn't much. There was no specification, but even with the drive shaft connected, there was very little companion flange run out. Number seven, diagnose, inspect, service, and replace wheel bearings, seals, and hubs. Here, the focus is on a front wheel drive vehicle, front wheel bearings. These are mostly sealed assemblies. They are replaced when they become noisy or have too much play. To check the play, grab the tire at the 12 o'clock and six o'clock position. One hand pushes, one hand pulls and alternate that way. No play is felt. I want the video with an official AAC practice question. A front wheel drive vehicle has a vibration only when cornering. Which of these could be the cause? Is it an out of balance tire, a worn CV joint, worn ring gear, or an out of balance axle shaft? If these videos have helped you out, subscribe to the channel to show your support. Have a good day.